Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Greg Broad. I'm the current president of the HCA. Our thankless task in the last five days. Uh, but uh, this is an organization meeting. We do have some people that are going to give us some information uh, uh, and then maybe a direction we can move on on some of the problems we're dealing with here. Um, uh, there was a lot of activity down here today. Um, the State Department of Health was here surveying all the cesspool, uh, septic, all the tide pools that are becoming septic tanks. Uh, and uh, the, the fire department was down here uh, trying to retrieve the leaking propane tanks that are in places. Um, uh, civil defense was down uh, through um, uh, the environmental agency, and that's what those big waste bins are down uh, at the end of Kapoho Kai. Uh, we're probably going to try to get one at the end of Kaheka as well. Uh, we'll have somebody tell us about how to put the, to put, what to put in where and when, you know, what type of refuse they accept in which bins. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn it over to Harry Kim, and he's going to uh, give us a, maybe an overview uh, of what agencies we can talk to about which situations and then uh, we also have um, Bobby Jean Leadhead here who used to be the head of planning and now she's in one year in Green Waste now. What's it called though? What's the official name? Department of Environmental Management. Department of Environmental Management. So we do have a couple of uh, county people here. Um, the, the, I did notify the uh, Department of Health this morning. I talked to Aaron, um, I'm not sure of his last name. Bueno. Bueno. I did talk to Charmaine Kamaka at the Civil Defense. They knew that we were having the meeting today. Um, they didn't know if they were going to be able to get somebody here this late in the day, but uh, they have been canvassing the area during the day today. They were, a lot of people were here in force which was nice to see after people were just dropping in for a few minutes to assess our situation. So I do think the wheels are starting to move. Uh, we just don't know how far they're going to move in our direction or where we can ask for assistance and help. So uh, maybe Harry can help us uh, guide us in that direction. First of all, to this community, uh uh, I marvel at how you get together and do things. It's really nice to see you helping each other. Mm -hmm. And you know you were all alone on Thursday and Friday and also Saturday and part of Sunday. And I even saw a weekend and I thought, oh, some tempest going to flare, but they didn't. You know, it was really good. In regards to, I'd like to share something in regards to phenomena. Oh, this is what happened. And some of you know, I worked in civil defense 24 years. I built my place before there was such a building code because I saw what happened in 1987. So I built it up. Now I wish I had it two feet higher. Not to make it safe on the way, but to meet the flood insurance hike because I'm below their standard, which they established two years after me. I paid a regular everybody's price. And you go, geez, this is still legal. But that's okay. Uh, the house was still, but you know, the phenomenon I wanted to share with you, and explain why. We as mankind always think we can predict nature. I don't care if you from Tsunami Warning Center or Central Pacific Hurricane Tracking Center or Hawaii Volcanoes every time. And when you're young, you believe in science 100%, got all the answers, but the older you get, the more I realize there's a uh -huh here. I learned that with almost every emergency. On this one here, the biggest uh, miscalculation was of uh, estimated time of arrival. I do calculate, you know, well, I should say I calculate, but they do calculate a range of error based on <coughs> the satellite, is an air recon. Now you have Doppler radio, so radar, so you can be more accurate when it comes to shore. And with all that, you think, okay, you know, then you look at what they're predicting or projecting. Uh, and you always remember in the back of your mind what I used to tell people. I hope I'm not insulting anybody. Uh, for your future, for your safety, don't pray God. Mankind. 
trying, he's doing the best they can, but they're not as a policy in the I'll tell you what happened on this one here. It was moving west, northwest for a while. Projection it was going to go more north than south of the island. It wound up Kapol Port, right here. Right? But it meandered. I don't care what information you get. They were projected on makeup time, or 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Friday morning, it will pass you, or hit you, and then carry on. It never did materialize. And I saw the, uh, the video in regards to the center, and I saw something I never have seen before, and I don't know what it is. I'm going to find out from people smarter than me what their opinion is. But the Hawaiians will tell you, oh, that's Madam Pele. Mm -hmm. And my Hawaiians would tell you when I first took the job, it's Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, Pohala, Pololai, whatever. Right? But here comes this hurricane that did harm, it caused misery for a lot of you. And as it approached Kapol Point, and you can go and get the videos of it, it bounces off this island like somebody threw a tennis ball off the wall. Just wham, wham, away from south and west of the island. And you look at that, and you replay that, and you go, holy Hannah, and all the forecasts in the world, not that was even the remote scenario would happen. And that's why the rest of the islands did not get the kind of rain. You know, if you have friends in corner, they'll tell you, hell, what rain? A wind uh, factor, nothing of uh, a tropical storm. So just, just to uh, put in your hat somewhere, I've learned that of volcanoes, tsunamis, storms, you name it. And, uh, they'll, they'll project the best, but always leaving your back of the mind. Uh, you know, we don't know everything. In regards to the surge thing here, those of you are from the old, you know, Estelle 87, it came pretty high and we lost a lot of homes then. But this was higher because of the force behind it, the higher being right there. In regards to what will happen here, uh, the Civil Defense Organization will, and I think they've already planned three, maybe Bobby can update me on it, but they call it DEPS, Disaster Assistance Centers. And uh, if you don't, uh, they haven't announced it yet, they will, I'm sure, within a day or two. Uh, at the most, because they've already identified, understand three places. The Disaster Assistance Center is not to give you assistance directly yet, because that comes with FEMA. And I just talked to Senator Schultz this morning, and they are pursuing the presidential. Right now they're getting all the information they can from the county and the state uh, to make sure we qualify, that what kind of programs are made available. So. Uh, but be aware, right? it's not a magic, right? It's a magic for government of state and county. If they declare it, then they'll pay for all of the county and state government expenses, the overtimes and equipment that Bobby Jean had to go buy, or chainsaws, you don't have to worry about paying for it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a big relief for your taxpayers, so your tax money, rather. So indirectly, you do benefit, obviously, that county and state government uh, yes, there's a match, but it's only about 25% match. In regards to you, the benefit, <coughs> it depends what the president and the governor works out as far as what benefits they'll give you, uh, because they're very different programs. They'll, some will be automatic, like uh, temporary housing and those kind of things. But as far as uh, money, what people think it's a magic, it, it is not. Let's say Kalapana, the most anybody got was about $11,000. So someone did be, the house was destroyed and everything, and there's a lot of catch-all kind of things to it. It's a big help, but please don't think it's a magic wand. Uh, going back to Disaster Assistance Center, the county, Civil Defense is organizing that now. What it is, is we got all of <clears throat> many agencies as possible in one place, so they can answer your questions and maybe uh, follow up or do you have any immediate needs right now so they can address that, especially that of Red Cross or housing. But the rest is information given on what's coming forth and information taken so they can pursue you know, certain kind of things. Right? That's called a disaster assistance center. When the president 
hopefully declares a state of emergency, then you will have a disaster center. And now that's when they will interview individuals in regards to what your problem is, what your needs are, whether you qualify or don't qualify. I will forewarn you, don't get flustered and because it's very easy to get frustrated by saying, well, I just gave that information to these people, et cetera, et cetera, because they're going to be redundant. You know, the county will do their initial. Red Cross might even do some of their initial. But these people that come and represent FEMA have to be very specific. You have to show this, you have to show that, you have to qualify for this. So just uh, bear that in mind. Be patient when they have to get information from you. They have to do that. Because unfortunately, the cockroaches come out and try to cook people, always. In regards to when will uh, that happen, I would say within two or three days of you know, range, uh, maybe sooner, maybe a day later. When will a FEMA assistance center comes in? Well, that depends when the president signs it, if he signs it. But uh, some of the fans will make it well known to you. In regards to where you go from here, I hope uh, all of you had flood insurance. And as you know, flood insurance is a federal flood insurance program. Uh, it's better than private because they won't try to cut you down as much as possible. They'll give you what you qualify for. But you make sure that if you touch anything, uh, make sure that you document it. Make sure you take pictures if you can of any damage that you have. Uh, so I like us, we naturally, we want to get stuff done right away. And if you remove the evidence of damage, well, what can they go by? So please, before you touch anything, you know, document those stuff. And Bobby G said something about the garbage, trash, they all coordinate that. I just want to relate the problem Kauai had, and they almost had to pay back the federal government because they got all the trash, as she used the word pala, meaning rubbish, uh, all in one pile, and the county took it all and dumped it all in one place, and guess what's in it? Hazmat. Right? Everybody just dumps. Just get it out of sight and bury it someplace. But they had to dig it up. Because, you know, the EPA does not forgive during the emergency. You cannot contaminate water or land with emergency. So as Bobby Jean said, you know, what goes, what goes. Uh, please try to help her out in that. Know, segregate your trash as best as possible to make it easier for them because they have to make sure they comply with the law. In regards to things here, I think Bobby Jean is here. Uh, she's cabinet under the American law. And before she leaves, uh, make sure you pass on to her what your needs are, you know, like security. I called the police last night because somebody called me to say theft. See what uh, Bobby Jean can follow up for you because of security. Because the cockroaches always come out and uh, they show the worst of who they are. Because the other thing, I get sticking on the cockroaches. Always, always, people will come looking very professional, saying they'll fix your place, give you a very good price take what they can from you because they got to have a down payment and I promise you two things will happen. If they're not, you know, licensed or whoever they are, they will do a crap-ass job or you'll never see them again. Uh, and you, because you're in a state of mind, you just want it fixed, you grab things, especially if they say, oh, the guy said 20,000, I can do it for 10. Uh, so please uh, protect yourself. Right? You got hurt by nature. Don't let the cockroaches get to you. Uh, make sure that whoever talks to you, you ask for ID. You know, ask who they are. Don't talk to me about information. Unfortunately, at my age, you see people from this level go up to all kinds of level to make an extra dollar. So before Bobby Jean goes, make sure you pass on to her because she represents the mayor in regards to what your immediate needs are. Uh, the one, I think security is very important because this is long term. And, they, you know, I explained, because a lot of the people don't realize how much damage they see. It worked for Truman Harrell, uh, you know, before. Uh, most people didn't think we got damaged that much. And uh, 
I'm glad to see there's a lot of activity today. And they responded. Uh, I haven't had... Uh, Gray called me last night. It was last night, right? I'm getting, I'm getting really foggy on time. Last night in regards to he wanted uh, the uh, contamination check for any possible contamination because of fast food, this and that. He wanted secondary hazard check because of propane gas and other things. And it was last night. And they will respond. I have that much confidence that they will respond. And in closing, I want to say, you know, I'm sorry for what happened, but I'll close with a good start for Harry Kim. Okay? <laughs> like you, you know, you look at this beautiful place. I bought my place in 1971. I came back from the mainland in 1967, and don't you ask me how old I am. And because I knew what was going to happen to Hawaii, and I love, I love the beauty of nature. I love the feel of the ocean, the smell of everything, but the beauty of fish, etc. Uh, for those of you new guys like Greg and others who fought for 40 years to get this a fish management area to preserve. Well, uh, yesterday as we left the meeting uh, with uh, one of the guys here, that Adam. And we're looking down outside of my house, down in the poles there, the still stay. And there are about 12 baby fish on dry land. And no, not even a trace of water. And he said, hey, that one moved, you know? So he bent down, he touched it, and it wiggled. And I, I said, put it in my hand. And I said, put one in, and touch it. And eight wound up in my hand. And I ran to the water, put it in, and not even two seconds, swam off at school. And I thought, ah, oh, everything's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs>